India spends about 5.5% of its defense budget on R&D. If you look at US and China, they spend between 10 to 15% of their defense budget on R&D. And their budget is much higher than our defense budget. So if you have to catch up with them, it is going to be very challenging unless we increase the percentage of our defense R&D spending. So what is the net effect because of these challenges? We have delays in the design and development. We have delays in production because we don't have control over the entire supply chain. And the net effect is we are followers, not leaders. It is going to be very challenging to catch up in conventional domains because they are already 10, 15 years ahead and they are spending more than you. So it is now absolutely necessary that we look at how we can use disruptive technologies to catch up. We need to leapfrog or not only leapfrog, even pole vault if you have to achieve technology leadership. And this can only happen if we imbibe or develop these new disruptive technologies and use them in our defense systems. Otherwise, it is a, going to be a Herculean task because you are already 10 years, 15 years behind them. So what is needed, the graph which I showed, you need much more overlaps between the academia, DRDO and the R&D design development establishments and the production. And you need much more involvement of the users with all three. This is what we need going ahead. So let me elaborate in more detail. We will need more participation of industries in design and development. We will need more innovation by startups and MSMEs. As our organization becomes larger, it necessarily becomes bureaucratic, whether it is a government organization or a private sector. Because you need structures to manage the organization. So innovation is usually given the short shift. If you need innovation to come in quickly, you have to promote startups and MSMEs who are small, flexible, nimble, and you have to encourage them to do this innovation but you have to absorb that innovation in a larger organization so that it can be sustained. The startups cannot sustain for 10 years, 15 years, and their mindset also is to move from one innovation to another. So we have to establish strong mechanisms where we respect their IP, which they create. You have to reward them for their IP. You have to absorb what they have done and use them in your systems which you are developing. Unless we build this framework, we are going to struggle. We have to involve academia in basic and applied research and futuristic technologies. As I said, academia was involved with DRDO for a long time. But it was more in a support role, not in a role where they are generating technologies which are needed. See, DRDO doesn't have the bandwidth to look at very advanced technologies, very futuristic technologies, because we are busy in designing, developing, and trying to deliver prototypes to our services. You need people with the bandwidth who can look at really futuristic technologies if you have to. And at low TRL levels, the academia should be able to work independently. We need to create test facilities and infrastructure. Unfortunately, this is an area which we have ignored in the country. One of the significant reasons, I'm, I will say not the only reason, is in our aero engine program, 
we didn't create the necessary facilities which are necessary to test the aero engine. We didn't create facilities to test the subsystems on their own. We didn't create the high altitude test facility. We didn't create the flying test bed necessary to test the engine. So every iteration became a very long cycle. We cannot afford to make the same mistakes in the future if we have to become a technology leader. And these infrastructure are very costly to create. This infrastructure utilization is never 100%. So its utilization is usually 20, 50, 20%, 30%. But these are needed. And only the government can invest in these. No private sector will invest in creating infrastructure. So we need to create this infrastructure make this infrastructure available to our industries to use it, to our economy to use it, of course, at a, uh, at a fee. We have to do this, otherwise it, we will remain as we are today. As I mentioned, repeat, as I've mentioned repeatedly in my talk, capacity building is lacking. And one of the reasons is because of, because of our acquisition, acquisition procedures, which doesn't encourage capacity building. As I said again earlier, we have to emphasize on disruptive technologies. Otherwise, achieving technology leadership is going to be difficult. And civil military fusion and I'm glad to say here things are changing. Now, DRDO as well as services are becoming part of all our national missions, such as the AI mission, the quantum mission, the semiconductor mission. So this is a good change that is happening in the country. We can absorb what is happening in those civil mi missions and incorporate those technologies which are being developed in those missions at an early stage in our systems. <coughs> so at DRDO, we are also alive to these changes that are happening. And we are trying to see how we can play a role in driving the R&D ecosystem to what is desirable. So we have decided that we will take up all our mission mode projects only with a development come production partner.